John Pollock, 1412 North 35th Street, Omaha. Well, as you can tell, winter has already started. Uh, this uh, pattern that we're in uh, looks to continue for the next couple of weeks. Uh, we've got uh, actually a, a, a northern jet stream that's uh, been plunging down over the Plains states and giving us uh, frequent cold air. That's going to continue. Uh, we have a uh, unusually active southern jet stream that it's been cutting off into loops, not just over the U.S., but actually around the globe at 30 to 35 degrees north latitude. Uh, that's also responsible for the well-publicized snow that they had over Jerusalem lately. We've got to watch that thing, because if it moves north, we're talking uh, snow and or icing for our area. Uh, as it is, we might be getting some requests for help from our southern neighbors as they have to deal with that stuff. Uh, if you want, uh, we're between uh, the storm tracks, Alberta Clippers to our north, the other ones to our south. If you want a white Christmas, uh, Sioux Falls, or perhaps Topeka. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, uh, for those of you who are uh, wondering what uh, uh, if we're really getting global warming, if we keep having cold winters like this, the uh, the whole cold pattern is severely displaced to uh, in the northern hemisphere is displaced to this side of the northern hemisphere, from the central U.S. over to the North Atlantic, and on the Asian side they're a lot warmer than normal. Uh, in addition, uh, for a meteorologist like me, uh, I saw a lot of this type of pattern from the early 1970s to the mid-1980s, and we were in colder temperatures then on the same pattern. Uh, some of you may recall this is the 30th anniversary of the 1983 cold spell where we didn't get above zero from December 16th until Christmas. I had a t-shirt that said I survived December of 83. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's uh, <laughs> quite pertinent. I in my tractor three times to feed one pan of cattle. I can believe it. That was a really tough one. Uh, so that's, that's where we are on the, uh, the weather. My hunch, and it's only a hunch, is that uh, we've got a uh, warm water pool in the North Pacific that I think is liable to stabilize this pattern for much of the winter. If that happens, uh, we're not going to be getting a lot of snow in the uh, central northern Rockies, and we'll be going into the uh, um, 2014 uh, flow year kind of dry. Uh, one last comment regarding Fort Calhoun. Uh, I agree with the uh, published comments in the World Herald from David Lockbaum of the Union of Concerned Scientists. Thank you for your time. Morning. Morning. David Corbin, 1002 North 49th Street. Uh, as uh, John gives you the weather report, I just uh, want to take an opportunity to uh, uh, tell you about some of the things I've been watching in the, the media and the press. <laughs> Uh, Bill McKibben, who's the co-founder of uh, 350.org, uh, said, We need an energy system that looks like the Internet, distributed, shared, and decentralized. Uh, because we're a public power state, we have the opportunity to do things that others can't do. In the New York Times on uh, December 5th, uh, they reported that uh, the companies that now are incorporating a carbon price into their strategic planning. These companies include Microsoft, General Electric, Walt Disney, ConAgra, right here, Wells Fargo, DuPont, Duke Energy, Google, and Delta Airlines. A quote from that was from Alan Jeffers, an uh, ExxonMobil spokesman, who said, ultimately, we think the government will take action through a myriad of policies that will raise prices and reduce demand of carbon polluting fossil fuels. Uh, I couldn't agree more. I know you know that we believe that the coal plant is ripe for retirement, as the Union of Concerned Scientists says, and as they updated their report to include, still include that. 
And uh, of course, I'm sure you've all you're all aware that under a presidential memorandum, uh, each uh, federal agency would have until 2020 to get 20% uh, of its electricity from renewables uh, supplies. So agencies are supposed to build their own facilities when they can or buy clean energy from wind farms and solar facilities. We've already commended you on what you've done with wind and uh, I still think you're sadly uh, behind the times in terms of solar. In Minneapolis, they've now passed a requirement that a certain percent has to be from solar. And here's what, I've, here's what my fear is. Uh, when Alexander Graham Bell uh, had invented the, the phone, sometimes people can underestimate uh, what the new technology is and act slow. But here's his quote. One day, he said back in 1880, one day there will be a telephone in every major American city in the United States. <laughs> Let's not underestimate the technology that we have now. Thank you. Thank you. Did you guys all have a lot of time on your hands to write speeches this month? <laughs> you were right. You got a lot of people behind you, so let's uh, let's not make it quite so lengthy. Okay. Yeah, we did have time to write speeches. Uh, uh, this is related to your corporate operating plan uh, and the need to be proactive as far as evolving environmental regs. We do continue to applaud you for your purchase of 400 megawatts of wind generation. But as David was saying, I, you know, we wonder, is this going to be enough? Is this going to meet the demand of the future? The president's order to have, uh, you know, 20% of renewables by 2020 for all federal agencies and civilian, which includes civilian and military. Um, and I guess, you know, concerning how much you are investing or have invested in nuclear and uh, still investing in coal, um, I think some of the concerns of the corporate world are um, planning for future growth on the expectation that the government will force them to pay a price for carbon pollution as a way to control global warming. Um, and according to uh, this Corporation for Environmental Study, part of which David was quoting, he says it's a climate change as a line item. They're looking at it from a rational perspective, making a profit. It drives internal decision making. Companies see that trend as inevitable. What you see here is a hardening of that understanding. That is why companies like Google and Facebook chose Iowa over Nebraska. Nebraska needs to catch up. <coughs> Looking at ConAgra and Offit, their uh, goals for 20 and 25 percent of their uh, energy coming from renewable energy, I think these are something that uh, Nebraska is going to have to deal with. Numerous studies have proven that we can satisfy all of our energy needs through renewable energy sources, <coughs> energy efficiency. It may be a paradigm shift for utilities, but renewable energy, energy efficiency, and conservation can be accomplished fairly quickly. And furthermore, they're both cost effective. Thank you. Cynthia Tiedemann, 7562 Drexel. As a customer and part of your public, I wanted to add my voice calling for OPPD transparency. The public needs to be informed and encouraged to engage before decisions are made. One public issue is um, for district boundaries. I was disappointed that the public was not asked to comment on new district lines. Now that these have been developed and voted on by the board and approved at the state level, Clear lines delineating these board boundaries should be available. The map on the OPPD um, webpage is too blurry for the public, um, including potential candidates, to read the boundaries. Lastly, these past months you've heard testimony with support of scientific research about old coal plants harming public health, especially children, and causing environmental harm. There have been hints about retiring the North Omaha plant or switching it to gas. Such a decision should not come as a surprise to us. The public should be aware of these discussions. A major public power decision should include the public's input. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Graham Jordison uh, with Omaha Beyond Coal. 
Uh, I got to I gotta mention that when I saw the uh, news release that Fort Cumming was approved by NRC the other day, I thought I was losing my mind. <laughs> but, um, yeah, well, no, not, not, not really, not really. But I'm sure you're all very proud that Fort Cumming is... is um, uh, coming back online. Uh, you left a lot of your customers wondering if that was ever going to happen. And a lot of us uh, didn't want to see it happen, but in the end, it is um, happening. And it looks like uh, nearly 500 uh, megawatts of uh, capacity will be back online. Um, you'll be selling a lot of this wholesale. It's worth mentioning that it's a tougher market now um, to sell wholesale uh, energy because your the utilities in the region have had time to install uh, other sources of electricity, uh, mainly wind. Um, so, but after spending a billion dollars over 20 years, we'll see if it's worth it. Uh, I want to mention that while all this was going on, uh, it doesn't seem like you've put any money into low-income energy efficiency programs, um, and we still don't really know uh, where the ratepayers' green funds are going. Um, so that's definitely worth mentioning. Uh, one good thing, we applaud you on the 400 megawatts of wind this year. It was a huge accomplishment. Uh, we hope you continue to pursue more wind in the future. Um, but all, So all told, you now have more than enough energy to supply your service territory. Uh, and therefore, I think it's time to address that really dirty thing in North Omaha that we continually come here and talk about, the North Omaha Station. Uh, I'm, not the only one I want to see the, I'm not the only one that wants to see North Omaha retired. Um, here with me today are 800 photos of ratepayers across the city. Um, uh, these ratepayers from Omaha, they couldn't be here today. Um, because uh, they had other things going on, and that's another thing I want to talk about. Uh, this, this isn't an opportunity for real people in Omaha who have lives, uh, families, and work to come and express um, their opinions. We've heard about, um, we've heard about an opportunity, a uh, public process for your stakeholders. Um, we're not sure where that's at in its development, developmental stages. Um, but, but hardly anyone can attend these Thursday meetings. So next year I suggest having your meetings in the evenings when more people can be here. Um, you know, I was thinking today, what if a school teacher wanted to attend one of these meetings? They'd have to take one day off of work a month. They'd have to find a substitute to come in and teach their classes. A lot of people are interested in energy issues. This is a huge interest to a lot of people across Omaha. So I really encourage you next year to think about uh, extending some of your meeting times, moving them up uh, in the evenings when more people can attend. Um, and then finally, one more time, you know, uh, we don't want to continue to come here and ask you to shut down North Omaha Station. We've heard it's in, we've heard it's in the mix. Um, it sounds like it could be in the works hopefully soon. Um, but the decision is worrisome to us because we know that you, when you do make a lot of these decisions, you don't include the public. So, um, you know, let us know. Uh, let's continue to have discussions. Let's have uh, open meetings about North Omaha Station and uh, its fate. So. Here's the new year. Um, yeah, it's been a good one. Um, and I want to say one more thing. Uh, the people in this room um, are some of the biggest supporters of public power in the city. Um, so even though we come here and sometimes we get upset and angry at you all, we all really appreciate the work that you do. And we all are um, really happy that we have public power in our state. So thank you. Um, I'm Crystal Craig, 70, uh, 7110 South 76th Street in La Vista. Um, and I have come bearing some gifts from Santa. <laughs> yeah, he sent me. <laughs> so, upon investigation, you will find a couple of things. There's some treats in there, and then there's also... you some treats for very good on wind and we're making some good progress but there's um there's some coal in there because you've been very bad <laughs> also um i mean yeah so i mean that was fun right but in all seriousness um you know i uh i i i always try to be positive you know i'm not here to beat anybody up um I don't believe that negativity will accomplish anything. I think that we are all here together to work together. Um, this is the public power district and we are all very supportive of public power and the last thing we want to see is privatized and so we are we're trying to um, get 
we're, we're putting our efforts into involving the community, the public. Um, and as Graham had mentioned, it is very difficult for people to come to these meetings. So those 800 people in that box right there are silent, you know, but they're attending and um, they're all making the same statement that they are wanting to see the North Omaha coal plant shut down. And I think that right now is um, a great opportunity now that Fort Calhoun is up and running. Um, I think that we should be able to provide enough power between that and the upcoming wind farm um, to our customers. So I still have the same concerns about the coal plant. Um, you know, it's dirty and it makes people sick. And I mean, you can buy low sulfur coal, you can add lime, you know, to things and, and replace a few things. But I would like to look at it as not only a challenge, but an opportunity for us to, um, you know, we really can be leaders. We're the fourth windiest state in the country. Um, and I, I really think that the wind farm purchase is amazing. Um, but I think that also now, um, now we have our power sources. I think that we need to work on efficiency. I think that um, if we could make all of the power that is being generated, um, make it to the person that is using it, I think we would not require as much energy production. Um, and as a mother, I am here, um, you know, my, my life is my children and clean energy. It is. You know, I really believe that, I mean, the world is full of issues, you know, but um, the cli climate change is real, you know, and uh, we're really contributing to that by running this North Omaha coal plant. Um, you know, there's a number of studies that have been done. This is one of the top ten dirtiest coal plants in the country. And I just think that this is an amazing opportunity. You know, I'm not, and you all probably know, I'm not exactly thrilled about Fort Calhoun being reopened. However, it is going to provide um, a lot of power. Carbon-free power. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> we'll get in. I'll, I'll let somebody else get into that one. But um, there's also like uranium mining and things like that. But um, I think that this is a great opportunity to shut down the coal plant because we don't like to come here every month, you know. And we're trying. We're standing out in front with like in the freezing cold, and, and it was super great that you guys brought us coffee and like that really was very nice. Yeah, they brought us coffee. Um, so that's great, you know. And I love that we can have a relationship and I can you know bring cold chocolates to you guys and we can all laugh about it and you know and you might as well have some fun here but really I'm here for my children and I'm here for my children's children in the future um, and if we do things we need to do them right you know when the, when this wind farm purchase was um, when we found out about it and I found out where it was there was some discussion amongst the environmental community about the placement of this wind farm and was it on prairie you know was it on developed land already and uh, me and Laverne drove out there to investigate where this was going to be because I feel like I helped to create this wind farm and I'm also responsible for it to make sure that it is everything is going smoothly so I'm not you know I I am trying to look at every angle and after going out there and realizing it all had been farmed and I feel better about it However, the, my point is that if we are going to invest in something, we need to invest in the future, and we need to make sure all of the angles are covered and that we're doing it right. And um, that I think efficiency is not exciting. You know, however, it is a very, it's our most important resource at this point. You've got the additional energy coming from the, wind, the clean energy, but now let's work on getting that energy to where it needs to go. And we get it. We, we understand your opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Next. <laughs> Next. Uh, Kathleen Hughes, uh, Omaha Westgate Road. Um, 
I wasn't planning on. I didn't. I wasn't planning on speaking today. And but I got my Irish up when I heard the comment about the fact that we're spending too much time writing speeches, and it's very important. This is a very important topic. The name of my company is Save the Earth. I'm really interested in saving the planet, and that's why we're here. We're here because we're concerned about what's happening and all the, the breathing, the, the coal, and everything that's happening. And that's why we're here. That's why we spend time writing speeches. That's why, and I feel bad. I didn't write one this month, but I just want to let you know it's important. We feel it's important. I'm sorry if I offended you. I was just trying to make one. Irish up. That's okay. Yep. There you go. That's okay. Laverne. Laverne Drayen, 4728 Cass. Uh, the carbon emissions from nuclear power full life cycle is as much as coal plants, except you pay for it. It's just more expensive. So that is the answer, 2008 study. We've given it to the board already. So um, you really shouldn't be saying that it's um, carbon free because it's just not true. Um, second of all, I have a question. The nuclear power plant's back online. You're all happy and gay. What I have not seen was the first question asked to Mr. Gates at the Washington DC meeting at the very first NRC Washington DC meeting he was asked how did the nuclear power plant get to the condition it had become where the federal agency had to swoop in and take it over and do the 0350 committee and find bolts that are too short and stainless steel bearings that aren't stainless steel and all the rest and Mr. Gates told him he was going to do a deep dive and there'd be a report on exactly how the nuclear power plant got into such disrepair. Now, I have not seen anything of that report. Mr. Gates' response in two other meetings was he lost his edge and it was institutional drift when he was asked again about that. So I'm wondering when the deep report of how the nuclear power plant got into disrepair, because I believe if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. And since I have not seen any documentation at all that explains why our nuclear power plant became lost three of the four cornerstones of criteria that you have to have. So is that report being worked on? Is it due out any day? Yeah, they, the report you're talking about was briefed in detail at several of the NRC meetings. Uh, we listed all the root causes that we felt uh, contributed to the, uh, to the process. And I know you were there, uh, right. but each one of those uh, listed in detail each of the causes. Okay, thank you. I'll look those up again. Sorry. And um, I'm giving you a DVD because your um, lobbyist seems to be responding to legislation versus leading the legislation. And um, Mr. Tim over there, not Mr. Tim, I can't remember your last name, sorry, um, had said that it was an EPA-driven thing at the last executive meeting, that, that, that how you respond to the coal plant and how you respond is basically EPA-driven. And so when they give you new regulations, you have to respond to them. Well, that report there is called Reinventing Fire, which was given to the President of the United States by Amory Levins and Rocky Mountain Institute. It is the entire blueprint of exactly where the EPA is going. Um, I gave Mr. Obama uh, the original report in 2008 when he was still a senator. I told him he could not be president since he hadn't read it, and he absorbed it very quickly for me. And so these reports, Amory Lovins, Rocky Mountain Institute, I know you're doing a half a million dollar study. These studies have been done. They're over. I've just handed them to you. I really wish you'd save some money and, and just implement what we already know, because we already know that efficiency works. Thank you. Have a nice day. And Merry Christmas to everybody, and Happy New Year. Anybody else? If not, this meeting's adjourned, and Merry Christmas. Happy New Year.